Everybody said you don't want to be the guy who follows Nick Saban. But Kalen DeBoer said, I'm your Huckleberry. And before they've even played a snap, there are rave reviews coming out of Tuscaloosa. Kalen DeBoer joins us now. And, Coach, what has made the transition work now that we're on the verge of kicking off this season? Coach Saban still remains a presence there, major role in college football. What has made the transition to the Kalen DeBoer era work so far? Well, it's a lot of things, and it's it's all the other people around uh, this program. The, those that uh, you know, we we retained and kept in, on board. Uh, whether it's leadership, uh, I got an amazing athletic director that's really made the transition very seamless. Uh, we got staff, whether it's on the field, off the field, uh, they've really helped us uh, in that transition. It's the players, the players, and just how they've embraced everything uh, that I've thrown at them, and them realizing that. You know, you can change things and doesn't make it right or wrong. Um, you know, it's just how we, we've done it. And they've been open arms to everything we've thrown at them. And, uh, you know, we haven't played a game yet. So, uh, you know, that time's coming real soon. We're excited about that. But it, it's been really a lot of fun here up to this point. Kalen, you know and I know in coaching it's not X's and O's. It's Jimmy's and Joe's. <laughs> When you arrived in Tuscaloosa, how impressed were you with the roster that you inherited? Yeah, we have a great balance of uh, some upperclassmen who have been through it here, guys who understand what it takes to win. Um, and then we have a lot of younger guys also that are, are really looking to those older guys, uh, the upperclassmen, to to show them what it's all about. Uh, we refer to it as the standard here. It's uh you know, it's a high standard, high level. Uh, but when it comes to the personnel, as you're talking, uh, there's a lot of playmakers. The depth and the magnitude of the physicality uh, and speed, I think, is a big thing that you just notice right away. Uh, the winter workouts, you know, that showed uh, very quickly, you know, what this uh, roster looked like. You brought some coaches with you from Washington. Uh, one of those was Nick Grubb, uh, excuse me, Ryan Grubb, who left quickly to go back to Seattle to be the Seahawks coordinator. What kind of uh, hurdle did that create for you in terms of what your role will be in play calling and such, given all the things that go into being a first-year head coach? Yeah, that was a great opportunity for Ryan Grubb and well-deserved. We go back really even before 2007, but uh, I've coached many years together. I think what still made it, again, seamless is kind of the word we're using here today. Um, Nick Sheridan uh, has been with me. This is going on year four. He was my uh, tight ends coach, but uh, knows the quarterback play, was a quarterback himself. Uh, and at Indiana, we worked together for a year. And then the last two years, he was with us at, uh, at Washington as well. And Jamarcus Shepard, Really a right-hand man, a guy that, uh, you know, gets our passing game going, um, knows the X's and O's inside and out, uh, even up to the offensive line. And so those two have really taken the offense, and it's the system that I've kind of built over many years, but uh, so many people have been in, important to that. Ryan Grubb, Nick Sheridan, Jamarcus Shepard, you know, that's a big core of them. So when it comes to the play calling, you know, I'm – I. Nick Sheridan will be doing the play calling, but it's really important to me to just not get in the way during a drive, but, you know, through the week, talking through the scenarios, uh, and then in the middle of a season, in the middle of a, of a, a drive, you know, there's, there's a time and place when the head coach, right, because it's got your name on it, has to step in. But I think that rhythm is so important, and I've known that, uh, having called plays for 20 years, uh, that that's, that's key. But in between series, we can do our talking, uh, we can put together the next series and, uh, you know, kind of kind of sort through things. And through all those years, you have always been a winner, including three national championships back at the NAIA level. Now you are at the top of the college football world at Alabama coming from Washington. W what is what is, though, a consistent thread to your success going all the way back to Sioux Falls that has carried through to now? Well, it's people. Uh, and with those people, you have things that you really count on uh, to, to get you through both the good and the bad. And it's it's having a family environment. I think my role is to help facilitate a place where these guys love coming into the building each and every day, pouring into the football, but pouring into each other. So family and then an accountability, you know, and a toughness. And, you know, these people, whether it's football, the football team or the, the staff, just having an accountability first to themselves and then each other. 
uh, something where, you know, the relationships that I referred to, you know, do matter and we don't get defensive when, you know, we get called to the table on something we could have done better. Uh, we understand that it, everything we say, everything we do is for the best uh, judgment and betterment of the football team. So I know in Sioux Falls you had a driver that took you everywhere. It, uh, you know, had a motorcade wherever you <laughs> went. Is that very similar uh, to what you get in Alabama? Sure, sure, Coach. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, exactly the same, exactly the same. Yeah, you can now you just yeah, you know, I think the thing it, Right. <laughs> I think uh, you appreciate, though, coming to a place like Alabama and, over, you know, Washington as well, but at Alabama, just all the people that make the whole program go. And uh, that goes back to having done a lot of those jobs when I was at the small college, le college level myself. Great seafood in Seattle. I've been to Chuck's Fish in Tuscaloosa, so I can, I can vouch for at least one good place uh, for seafood. Do you have any favorite places now, Coach? Yeah, that certainly would be one of them, uh, you know, and there's a, there's a few more. There's a couple good barbecue places and stuff. So, But uh, I, I got to be honest, the, this was a quick off season, uh, and, you know, I'm looking – Looking forward to this fall, and then I think after uh, after January next year, we'll really be venturing off and, and really understanding all the things that Tuscaloosa has to offer when it comes to, to those, you know, food and so forth. Yeah, you'll have, you'll have time for dessert. Is Nick Saban offering you two aside? Is he offering what? Two, two strokes aside? I know he's got all the oh, time oh, in the yeah. world now. <laughs> two, he, I, I'm going to need more than that. I know he's got a <laughs> good game and – I haven't played hardly at all, so, uh, you know. <laughs> Best of luck, yeah, Coacher. That. You're a busy yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me on Roll Tide. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. It all begins Saturday against Western Kentucky. Kalen DeBoer, hopefully we'll do it again sometime soon. And coming up next here.